What if the most dangerous part of a fighter pilot's mission happened before he ever saw the enemy? During World War II, the German Luftwaffe relied on a sleek, deadly machine, the BF-109. It was fast, powerful, and feared across the skies. But behind its combat reputation was a dark truth few talk about. More than 1,700 of its own pilots died without ever engaging in a dogfight. They weren't shot down, they weren't ambushed, they were flying the most advanced fighter in Germany's arsenal, and that's exactly what killed them. This is the chilling story of how one of history's most iconic warplanes became a death trap and why Germany kept using it anyway. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles banned Germany from building an air force. On paper, they weren't even allowed to own military aircraft. But behind closed doors, Germany was already preparing for the next war. Throughout the 1920s and early 1930s, they disguised their growing aviation industry as civilian. It was a cover, one that allowed engineers to test designs, train pilots, and quietly build the future of air combat. Once the Nazis took power, the mask came off. Germany wasn't interested in catching up. They wanted to leap ahead. At the center of that ambition was a Bavarian engineer named Willy Messerschmitt. His designs were fast, radical, and dangerous. And one of them, the BF-109, would soon become the symbol of German air superiority. But even in its earliest stages, one design choice was already setting the stage for disaster. In 1936, during the Berlin Olympics, Germany unveiled a sleek new prototype that stunned the aviation world. It shattered international speed records, reaching over 610 kilometers per hour and sent a clear message. Germany wasn't just back, they were ahead. But here's the twist. This groundbreaking German fighter, it was powered by a British engine. Early versions of the BF-109 used the Rolls-Royce Kestrel, a refined engine built in the UK. It was a temporary fix until German manufacturers could catch up. Soon, Daimler-Benz took over with a new fuel-injected engine that unlocked the 109's full potential, giving it the power to climb faster, dive harder, and outpace almost anything in the sky. But while engineers raced to boost speed and firepower, one fatal design flaw was quietly being ignored, and soon it would come back to haunt them. As soon as the Allies introduced faster planes like the Spitfire, Germany scrambled to supercharge the 109. The early machine guns were swapped out for twin 20mm cannons, one in each wing. They fired explosive shells that could shred enemy planes in a single hit. Later versions even added a third cannon, firing straight through the propeller shaft for pinpoint accuracy. It was becoming a flying weapon, fast, lethal, and unforgiving. But the more firepower they packed in, the more unstable the plane became. Recoil shook the entire airframe. Vibrations jammed weapons mid-battle. Some pilots called the center-mounted cannon a suicide barrel because of how often it failed when you needed it most. Yet none of this compared to the floor waiting on the ground, the one that would kill more pilots than any Spitfire ever did. A single engineering decision made to boost speed would turn takeoffs and landings into a deadly gamble. The BF-109 was built for speed. To make the fuselage as aerodynamic as possible, engineers mounted the landing gear directly to the body, not the wings. It looked sleek, it reduced the drag, and it was a death sentence. The narrow undercarriage made the 109 brutally unstable on the ground. Just a minor bump on the runway, a gust of wind, or the slightest overcorrection could cause the plane to tip, flip, or crash. On takeoff, many pilots never even got airborne. On landing, experienced aces were wrecking their planes in violent ground loops. During training alone, over 1,700 German pilots were killed in non-combat crashes, most of them because of this one flaw. Nearly 10% of all BF-109s were destroyed without a single enemy shot fired. And despite knowing the risk, Germany never fixed it. The flaw stayed in the design from the very first version to the last day of the war. The BF-109 wasn't done evolving. When the war shifted to North Africa, German engineers rushed to adapt to the fighter for the brutal desert conditions. Sand filters were added. New drop tanks boosted its range. Cooling systems were modified for the heat. It worked, barely. Then came the Eastern Front. In 1941, 
Germany launched Operation Barbarossa, the massive invasion of the Soviet Union. The 109 led the charge. To keep up with endless combat demands, a new variant emerged, the F model. Engineers stripped the wing-mounted cannons and concentrated all firepower in the nose. Two machine guns above the engine and a deadly 20mm motor cannon through the propeller shaft. This gave the plane better balance, reduced drag, and made it a sniper in the sky. It was in this form that the BF-109 created its most feared aces. Men like Eric Hartmann, the highest scoring fighter pilot in history with 352 kills. But those record-breaking numbers came at a grim price. Because in the Luftwaffe, surviving didn't mean resting, it meant flying until you didn't. Allied pilots were rotated out of combat. After a set number of missions, they were reassigned to train recruits, recover, or regroup. German pilots? They weren't so lucky. The Luftwaffe was always short on experienced airmen, so if you survived, you kept flying. No breaks, no rest, no end in sight. That's why aces like Eric Hartmann or Gerhard Barkhorn reached hundreds of confirmed kills. It wasn't just skill, it was endurance. They flew hundreds of missions because they had no choice. Most didn't make it to the end. A handful of top scorers lived. Almost all of their comrades didn't. The BF-109 became a symbol of that mindset. Keep going until the fuel runs out, the engine fails, or you're shot down. Germany turned its best pilots into flying machines and burned them out like spare parts. As the war dragged into chaos, the BF-109 kept evolving. The G variant, nicknamed Gustav, was the most widely produced. It packed more armor, heavier machine guns, and a new 30mm cannon that could tear through Allied bombers. Some versions carried rockets, bombs, even extra cannons under the wings. On paper, it looked unstoppable but each upgrade made it slower, heavier, clumsier, and in the skies over Europe, speed was survival. Against newer Allied fighters like the P-51 Mustang and the Spitfire Mark IX, the 109 was now too heavy to fight and too slow to flee. Fuel shortages and rushed training made things worse. By the war's end, many 109 pilots were barely trained teenagers, flying into impossible odds. The plane that once ruled the skies was now a relic, pulled back for desperate defense missions as the Reich crumbled. Even in its final moments, the BF-109 was feared, respected, and still just as deadly to its own pilots as it had ever been. If you found this story shocking, hit the like button. Want more forgotten war tech and military mysteries? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. And tell us in the comments, was the BF-109 a brilliant innovation or a beautiful disaster?